welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about fluid management in burns we will be discussing about some of the total management plans of burn cases but uh, we mainly uh, focus on fluid management in burns so when we discuss about burns we should understand that there are different types of burns one is dry heat that is uh, uh, burn from uh, uh, fire wet heat steam or hot liquids radiation friction skin repeatedly rubs against another surface heated objects burn sun burn that is very very common in our country electrical burn that is also very common chemicals and uh, other causes for burns in that uh, thermal burns are most common cause for burn uh, in our country uh, but other con- other other conditions like uh, Uh, sunburn electrical burn all are, all are also uh, seen in emergency rooms now when we are talking about burns we should understand that uh, there are burns when when there is a tissue injury uh, to the burn area that is uh, basically du- uh, classified into three major groups that is first degree burn second degree burns third degree burns first degree burn means only outer layer of the skin will be involved second degree burn means lower layer of the skin or dermis will be involved first degree epidermis the second degree dermis third degree burn means it's a full thickness burn uh, that means patient will be losing large amount of uh, tissue and deeper tissue is also destroyed through this uh, tissue destruction patient may be losing large amount of volume also so uh, the clinical severity of the burn depends on the degree of the burn Uh, sometimes you can see only uh, extensive superficial burns can be there but patient mo- will be mostly uh, asymptomatic in terms of hemodynamic uh, uh, problem but still they have severe pain because pain is a uh, uh, pain is an important feature of superficial burns than other types of uh, burns superficial burns will have severe pains comparing with uh, uh, superficial burns will have severe pain comparing with other types of burns now you can see here uh, this is a chart which will tell you how to differentiate uh, these type of burns clinically color epidermal burns red superficial dermal uh, pale pink uh, mid dermal dark pink deep dermal uh, little more dark red uh, full thickness burn it is uh, white color and a sharp formation will be there blistering is uh, classically seen in Uh, dermal uh, burn onwards uh, capillary refill time is uh, slow from mid dermal uh, burn onwards because they they will be losing large amount of volume so reduced perfusion to uh, skin and superficial area can occur there so capillary refill will be less uh, sensation it is reduced in mid dermal uh, burns onwards and uh, like i previously told uh, pain is more in epidermal and superficial dermal burns healing uh, it takes uh, uh, nearly 7 days in epidermal 14 days in superficial dermal 14 14 plus or minus uh, days in uh, mid dermal and uh, deep and full thickness burns require surgi- surgery and uh, some reconstructive surgeries uh, uh, to correct the problem now i have uh, previous slide we have seen the different colors blisters capillary refill and uh, sensation healing all these things this is the explanation for that uh, how to check all these things uh, we will not be going into the details of this now now once the patient develops uh, um, burn they will be losing large amount of uh, volume from the body that is very very important so if you see the systemic effects here patient can have hypovolemia myocardial depression cardiac output will be reduced uh, vascular permeability will be increasing uh, that will produce vascular collapse shock bronchoconstriction ards acute kidney injury mostly because of pre renal type of uh, kidney failure uh, gi ulcers that is stress ulcers uh, fluid resuscitation is re- required in all these conditions that we will see afterwards some systemic inflammatory response injury also can occur in many patients who is having severe burns that also can contribute to the problem hypermetabolic phase of uh, uh, 
uh, hypermetabolic phase can also uh, occur in some patients after some years but that will not be discussed now uh, that is a long term effect of burn now whenever we treat a patient who is having burn whatever may be the burn whether it is um, electrical burn or uh, uh, thermal burn or sun burn uh, we have to give first aid for all these patients the best uh, way of giving first aid in almost all types of burns is just hold the area with uh, running water that is the best way to do uh, 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 like cooling of the skin so continuous flushing of that area for 10 minutes uh, no need to apply any ice ointments butter uh, paste all these home remedies should not be used there remove immediately all the clothing garments ornaments from patient's body because if there is an ornament like ring and all uh, suddenly uh, what happens because of edema uh, you may not be able to remove that afterwards so immediately remove all the ornaments uh, uh, or uh, clothing everything from patient's body then after cleaning the area cover the affected area with a clean dry cloth that is the uh, that is the best way to prevent uh, most of the infections uh, during acute phase now once the patient reaches the emergency room we have to take care of patient's airway breathing circulation like any other patients so uh, all these things are very important in burns because when we are seeing a burn case we will be knowing we will be thinking that only uh, skin is involved it is not like that many patients uh, might have uh, strangled uh, inside uh, 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 burning uh, area so that uh, they'll be uh, they'll have a exposure to carbon monoxide poisoning so carbon monoxide uh, uh, during uh, acute uh, uh, incidence of fire it can produce a lot of adverse effects in patient so we have to be very careful when we are treating a patient who is having extensive burns they can also have carbon monoxide poisoning so airway should be taken care of a lot of secretions Uh, other things may be there in the oral cavity that has to be cleared then if required patient uh, may uh, need mechanical ventilation uh, and intubation so that has to be taken care then all patients with major burns should receive high flow oxygen for 24 hours so even if we are seeing normal saturation when we are treating a patient who is having burn initially we have to give oxygen because some of these patients can have carbon monoxide toxicity so we should not take any risk we should start oxygen without any failure so 100% oxygen via non breathing face mask if possible then measure the blood gases and uh, carboxy hemoglobin level also should be measured if possible some machines uh, like point of care machines can have this uh, setting so you can do that if uh, possible otherwise continuously give oxygen for some time then reassess the patient if the gcs is full patient is not having altered behavior flapping tremors are not there then you can stop the oxygen now remove all the uh, clothing from the patient A- any tight circumferential trunk burns uh, patient may require escherotomy that uh, be require a, uh, uh, like service of uh, surgeon surgeon's uh, help is always important in burn patient because some uh, some of these patients can have severe um, uh, burns in the superficial area they may require surgical correction immediately otherwise uh, it can create complication afterwards now in emergency room we have to always take care airway breathing and cervical spine is uh, very very important because during burns they can uh, they will be panic and they may run uh, during burns they can have uh, injuries all over the body injury spine also can be uh, possible so c spine should be stabilized then breathing and ventilation should be taken care circulation part we'll uh, discuss afterwards neuro status should be taken care because many patients who 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 have who have burns they can also have some injuries head injuries carbon monoxide poisoning low gcs all these things we have to take care then exposure part we have to see uh, uh, suppose the patient is uh, fully exposed we have to cover the body and the patient should not go to hypothermia afterwards then uh, in emergency room we have to treat the patient uh, you can re- uh, remember the mnemonic like fat fluids analgesia and blood test and tubes any uh, any intubation or uh, rails tube or 
uh, other renal catheters all things should be uh, taken care ample history should be taken allergy medications past medical history last meal uh, events uh, mechanism of burns all should be taken care and see what happened to the patient any allergy we should uh, uh, what are or any drugs we should avoid all these things we have to take care head to toe examination is very important tetanus uh, toxoid is should be given for all the patient then detail document uh, what happened to the patient wh what is the gcs of the patient at, at present what is the fluid status of the patient what is the burn area all these things should be documented in primary survey i am not going to the details of all these things uh, we have to take care airway breathing circulation that is very important and uh, you have to do some basic investigation like abg should be taken care carboxyhemoglobin level should be identified then uh, uh, other electrolyte imbalance should be identified blood sugar should be identified all uh, jewelries uh, or uh, clothing should be removed so all these things are very very important and uh, we have to uh, we have to take care of the patient's uh, fluid status uh, properly in emergency room now circulation part we are going to discuss now when we are talking about circulation uh, in in uh, burns uh, one of the most important problem is severe fluid depletional uh, state uh, during acute phase itself patient will be losing large amount of volume and again during the recovery period or during the period when the patient is in emergency room itself patient can lose large amount of volume through these uh, wounds so there are two problem acutely during burn itself patient can lose large amount of volume and uh, uh, when the patient is in emergency room itself patient can lose uh, volume through the uh, wounds so both should be taken care so if uh, patient loses large amount of volume like this especially uh, which contains uh, albumin or plasma uh, there will be decreased intravascular volume that will reduce the internal circulation that will reduce the kidney perfusion you can get uh, lactic acidosis you can get uh, uh, renal failure all these things are very common in severe burns so if the patient's uh, burn injury percent is less than 20% most of the patients require only supportive therapy and oral fluids are uh, better than iv fluids so if the burn area is very less take care of the uh, wound properly uh, wash it uh, with uh, cold water then uh, just give oral fluids that is enough o oral fluids are more than sufficient in this type of patients so you can calculate the percentage of burns in adult and child with the uh, rule of 9 you can see here uh, anterior chest posterior ch chest uh, 18% uh, both upper limbs uh, anterior part and both posterior part it is 9% uh, lower limbs up anterior part 9% posterior part 9% so like that you can uh, calculate the burn percentage that is very important for managing the patient in emergency room with fluids so uh, always try to calculate the total burn area whether it is child or adult so child calculation also given here adult calculation also given here you can calculate the burn area and you can calculate the fluid requirement that uh, fluid requirement formula is called as parkland formula so parkland formula which can be used to calculate total volume of fluid to be given in first 24 hours during uh, uh, acute burns and it should be preferably a, uh, uh, preferably a uh, solution like ringer lactate or uh, plasmalate uh, also can be given ringer lactate is one of the best and easily available option so ringer lactate should be given 4 ml per kg body weight per percent of total body surface area so uh, burn area you have to calculate it. Uh, total burn area has to be calculated that percentage has to be calculated for ml per kg body weight per percent of the burn area so that has to be calculated this formula is called as parkland formula with this formula half of the volume is given in the first 8 hours post burn with remaining volume delivered in 16 hours for example in a case of weight uh, 70 kg weight patient with 50% uh, burn area 4 into 70 into 50 will give uh, 14000 uh, ml needed in 24 hours so 7 liters should be given in the uh, first eight hours uh, after injury 7 liters in the next 16 hours 
so that will be the fluid challenge in burns the preferable uh, solution in uh, burns is ringer lactate we know that ringer lactate is one of the most physiological solution available in the market and it is cheap also normal saline can be given but when we are giving a large volume of fluid like this patient can have some electrolyte imbalance dilution and uh, hyperchloremic acidosis all these things can occur they are basically they are benign conditions but even then we can avoid all these things we can go for a physiological solution like ringer lactate so either ringer lactate or plasma lactate that is the best uh, option in burns so 4 ml per kg per burn area and adult it is uh, the 4 ml and children it is uh, 3 ml per kg that is a dose difference now once you correct the intravascular volume with uh, ringer lactate so we are giving ringer lactate uh, when we are giving 1 liter of intravascular uh, ringer lactate only 300 ml will remain in the intravascular compartment rest 700 ml may shift back to the extravascular compartment so after correcting the initial volume resuscitation you can even add albumin so we can add either 25% albumin or 20% albumin two uh, two forms are available 20% albumin and 5% albumin are available depending on the cost and availability you can use both of these things advantage of albumin is it uh, it uh, it retains the water inside the intravascular compartment and you know that in burns the pa- patient will be losing large amount of uh, proteins uh, albumin plasma all these things so the importance of alb- albumin in our body is uh, to transport many uh, many uh, many substances including antibiotics or drugs we require albumin so albumin is the major transport media in our body so when the albumin is low patient uh, the transportation of sub, uh, the, all these substances will come down and it also reduces the oncotic pressure in the intravascular compartment that also produces edema intravascular volume loss all these things so albumin can be given uh, but it should be given only after initial volume resuscitation with ringer lactate now once you give ringer lactate the best way to monitor the patient is only urine output if the patient is not having any renal failure urine output alone is enough to monitor the patient if the urine output is good that is 0.5 ml per kg per hour in, uh, urine output is there then that indicates that either patient is volume uh, uh, patient's volume status is normal or your resuscitation is good so volume resuscitation uh, when we are doing we always have to uh, monitor the urine output uh, if the patient is unconscious or pa- we are not able to properly track the intake output chart better to put the uh, patient on uh, indwelling uh, catheters uh, so that we can monitor the output properly plasma lactate is another solution which is very useful solution it is having more physiological uh, 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 ingredients than uh, our uh, ringer lactate but it is costlier than ringer lactate uh, so ringer lactate is the choice of fluid in uh, any type of uh, re- fluid volume resuscitation in emergency room including burns so some patients who is having severe inhalation injuries inhalation injury means uh, when the patient uh, uh, have have exposure to heavy fires so uh, they can have inhalation of uh, this uh, fire or hot air inside the uh, lungs and that can create some problem where patient may be losing large amount of volume even from there also so these type of patients we require to give a uh, little higher volume that is 30 to 40 percent higher than uh, what we have given previously that we according to parkland formula it was 4 ml per kg per percentage here it is 5.7 ml per kg per percent that we have to be uh, very careful if the patient is having severe burns carbon monoxide poisoning inhalation injuries then the volume resuscitation has to be uh, in a higher dose and in emergency room in burns try to avoid uh, dextrose initially 
because dextrose is a good fluid uh, in a, as a maintenance fluid but initially if you give dextrose it will not reach anywhere it will just uh, shift to extravascular compartment we need to maintain the intravascular compartment initially to maintain the internal perfusion pro properly so you need to give either ringer lactate normal saline plasma light albumin anything in that uh, best option will be ringer lactate so ringer lactate has to be given but once the patient is in icu he, he may require a lot of calories in that type of patients you can go for uh, additional uh, 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 fluid like uh, dns or 5% dextrose requiring on their uh, caloric uh, requirement around uh, 200 kilocalories can be produced by 1 liter of uh, dns and 5% dextrose Albumin, we have already discussed that albumin can be given, either 20% or 5% albumin can be given, but it has to be given only after initial volume resuscitation. Never start albumin before volume resuscitation. Now, supportive therapy is very important in burns. We are not discussing that part here. We are only discussing volume resuscitation here. But any patient who is having um, uh, burns, remove all the clothings, uh, fresh chemical burns uh, properly with the water uh, a nasogastric tube should be uh, put initially itself if there is a burn percent more than 30 percent uh, then silver sulfur diacin is one of the easily available uh, tropical antibiotic that can be applied to the patient who is having uh, burns all over the body uh, it can prevent some amount of infection but reverse isolation is the best way to prevent infection in parents, patients with burns. The problem with burns is the skin is already damaged. The barrier of skin against infection is lost and patient is having low immunity during that acute phase. He is also having low albumin. So all these uh, uh, pro problems will add to uh, immunodeficiency and the patient can have severe infection. So, there is uh, uh, like a chance of uh, uh, skin infection in this patient, especially MSSA or MRSA. So, try to isolate the patient and give reverse isolation for the patient. Escherotomy is required in patients with uh, severe lesions, uh, uh, especially on the trunk. Uh, compartment syndrome can also in patients who is having uh, severe burns. Cardiac problem can occur in patients who is having uh, severe burns, especially electric shock, uh, cardiac uh, arrhythmias or uh, dysarrhythmias are very, very common. So we have discussed about uh, fluid resuscitation in burns. In that, uh, two important things uh, you have to remember. One is uh, how to calculate the percentage of burn area. Second thing is Parkland uh, formula. Uh, Parkland formula, there is an exception if there is an inhalation injury, you have to go for a higher uh, uh, percentage like uh, normally we give 4 ml per kg, here you have to give 5.7 ml per kg. Then the best uh, fluid uh, of uh, resuscitation will be Ringer lactate. Plasma light is also equally beneficial or better than Ringer lactate but it is costly. Once the patient is uh, volume resuscitated, then you can add albumin. Other supportive therapies are very, very important. Uh, tetanus toxoid should be given. We have to all, uh, also take care of patients' airway, breathing, circulation, uh, disability part. All these things we have to take care simultaneously, but we have discussed about uh, fluid resuscitation in burns here. Thank you.